in the, the charge density right. is L, I right. think does represent the closed charge. Yeah. So in this case, um, we know that there are lambda charges behind uh, every unit length. Well, here we have L unit lengths. So for the enclosed charge, you can just put lambda times L. We can see that has the right units, because this is in coulombs per meter, and L is in meters. So that'll come out to be coulombs, um, which, is what, uh, which is what we want. And in this case, the Gaussian surface does enclose the entire cylinder. So we don't need to set up any proportion. We should just use the original lambda, which refers to the entire cylinder. Good. continue to assume a positive <coughs> charge density, then the electric field lines will still be pointing radially away from the center line. So we can add that to our list here. Now we have E equals lambda over 2 pi r epsilon 0. And this is the case now where little r is bigger than big R. So again, you're doing a good job of not getting confused between little r and big R. Little r is our Gaussian surface, and big R is the actual cylinder of charge. Uh, before I forget, one thing we should have mentioned here, notice at the beginning they told us this was an insulating cylinder. What's the significance of that? Well, that means that the charges um, are, can stay put where they are. We don't need to worry about them moving. They told us there's a uniform charge. So that means the charges are uniformly spread out throughout the cylinder. If this had been a conductor, it would be impossible for them to be uniformly spread out because in a conductor, the charges would all move to the surface. So, but this is not a conductor. So this is an insulator where the charges can be uniformly spread throughout the entire cylinder. So we've been using that all along. Do you have the, uh, the handout on electric field with you? Let's take a look at that for a second. Handout for electric field and force. Okay. Good. Well, which part of the handout have we been using here? Um, this one? Yeah. So actually, we can actually check our answer. Um, so which formula is relevant here? Um, yeah. So we're going from a source charge to an electric field. So this is the left-hand part of the flow chart. And we've already got the formula for when you're outside of line symmetry. And I think we got the same exact answer, right? It's okay. Um, like I said, I don't know if you would get full credit for just looking up this uh, formula, though. Maybe they really want you to use Gauss's law. But this would still be a good formula to have in your cheat sheet so you can check your answer here. Okay. There's, even a way to, um, there's even a way to massage this formula so you could use it to figure out the electric field inside of the cylinder as well, but uh, maybe that's more trouble than, it, than it's worth. Uh, but that formula only directly works for outside the cylinder. We had to, to work out on our own what the electric field would be inside the cylinder. Okay, but you can always use this to check whether you're getting the right answer, at least when you're outside of a uh, line charge. So even though this is three-dimensional, it still has line symmetry, so this formula still applies. Okay, well, what happened in this uh, for part C? Okay, so now we get the electric field magnitude E as a function of R for all R. All right, well, let's give that a shot, then let's get some uh, blank paper and try sketching that out. Now, what I think what they want here is an actual graph. Oh. Okay. Where we have electric field on the vertical axis yeah. and little r on the horizontal axis. So I think.
work on that together. The key thing is they want us to use our answers from parts A and B to work that out. I think you were just kind of using your memory of the general formula, but they want us to use our specific answers over here. So first of all, there, we know there's going to be a dividing point oh, I see. when we get to here. Well, first of all, what about, say, when r is 0? What's the electric field going to be when little r is 0? When little r is 0. Which of these formulas should we be using here? The top formula or the bottom formula for this part of the graph? Um, the top one. Because now we're inside the cylinder. Mm -hmm. All right, so when r is 0, what would this be? Well, just what would the electric field come out to be if we plug in zero for r in that formula? Zero. That's right. So in fact, it won't be the maximum value of the electric field, but the minimum. That makes sense because when r is zero, we're in the very center line, and there is no enclosed charge. There, we can't draw a Gaussian surface, and there is no enclosed charge. Now, um, as r increases, is the electric field going to increase or decrease? Now, do you recognize, is this the equation for a line or for a curve? Uh, Remember, our vertical, our vertical variable here is E, yeah. and our horizontal variable is R. So what did you think, a line or a curve? Um, I guess it's just linear. Yeah. Remember that <laughs> this is the general equation for a line. Well, in this particular case, we know that the y-intercept is 0. So b will be 0. So if you simply have a horizontal variable times a constant, that's a line that goes to the origin. Well, that's exactly what we have here. We have the horizontal variable. Maybe it would help if I rewrote this like this. We can separate r from the other variables. And we can see that here we have a, a, a complicated constant times the horizontal variable. So this really is going to be a straight line that goes to the origin. Like this. And even for supercredit, we could say, what, what's the slope of this line going to be? Well, we know the slope is the coefficient on the horizontal variable. So the slope here would be lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 capital R squared. I don't know if they're going to require you to know the slope here, but they are going to be giving credit for people who see this as a straight line. So it's good to see that this portion here is a straight line. But this only extends to the point where little r equals big R, because then we're going to shift to a different formula. All right, um, and also, while we're at it, we should say what our vertical intercept is going to be. Well, what number should I plug in for little r at this point? Well, at this point, I should plug in big R for little r. And if you do that, you're going to end up with lambda over 2 pi. If you plug in a big R over here, that'll cancel one of the big R's on the bottom, and that will give us uh, this vertical point. All right. Now we have to figure out what the rest of the graph is going to look like. Well, now R is going to be bigger. Little r will be bigger than big R, and we're out here. All right. Uh, well, from this point on, is the electric field going to be increasing or decreasing? Yeah, it will be decreasing because r is in the denominator. As r gets bigger, the fraction will get smaller. Um, is this going to be a line or a curve? A uh, curve. Yeah, because this is the only thing that a line can be. So if this is a line, this must be a curve. When the horizontal variable is in the denominator, that's one version of a curve. And I shouldn't use m there because that's not really the, the slope anymore. And what are we going to approach as r goes to infinity? If r was infinite, what would e be? If we put in an infinity for r, what would it be? Approaching zero. Yeah, so we want to draw a curve that is asymptotically approaching zero. So that's how to work out those various portions. Does this make sense? Does it make sense that the further away that we get from the charges, the smaller the field would be? Well, that should make good sense. The further away we get from the charges, the smaller the electric field is going to be. The thing that's a little surprising, maybe, is that at first, increasing distance was increasing the electric field. But that was because at first, the increasing distance was allowing us to enclose more and more charge in our Gaussian surface. But once we get out, outside of the cylinder, we can't enclose any more charge. So then the field starts decreasing just because we're getting further and further away from the charges. 
All right, well, this is a pretty uh, popular type of problem where they ask you to actually graph these electric fields. So what they really mean, when they say sketch, that's like a code. When they say sketch, they want an actual graph with E on the vertical axis and little r on the horizontal axis showing the difference between when r is less than big r and when it's, uh, when it's bigger than big r. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about which parts are curves and which parts are, uh, are lines. Okay, and notice how very often in these problems, the answer for part C depends on the previous parts. So when you're taking the test, you always want to ask, how, how does each part depend on the previous part? 